Gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the best accessory in defining masculine elegance. The cufflink, here on Big Pretty Man. Hi, and welcome back to Big Pretty Man, a channel for the extra-large man who wants to live his life large and in charge. I'm your host, Timothy B. Pretty Crow. I'm a wardrobe and lifestyle consultant for the extra-large man. You know, gentlemen, since I started this channel, I've always preached that extra-large men had to, spe had to pay special attention to their clothes because that, that draws away from uh, the, your extra weight. And rather than people saying, "Here, come, look at that great big fat guy coming, they say, ooh, look at that big guy, that big well-dressed guy and how he's put together. And that's what you want. And the thing that defines that is both the fit of your clothes, the style of your clothes, as, you know, as well as the accessories with your clothes. And accessories are what really brings it together, just like I'm wearing here. You know, and one of the greatest uh, accessories that you can wear that can completely change the, the perspective of an outfit is one, one or two simple the little pins, and that would be cufflinks. Cufflinks completely change the game. They can take a something that's more like a business casual and suddenly make it look, look much more sophisticated, much more elegant automatically. Uh, yeah, and but the thing I've noticed is is that a lot of men, even in business, even in, in for, more formal business wear, don't wear cufflinks. They're going for the barrel cuff, and there's nothing wrong with a barrel cuff. It has its place. But you know what? When you put on, on so put on a French cuff with, with some ni nice cufflinks, completely changes the game. You suddenly, you know, you went from just ordinary um, ordinary suit guy in a suit to you're like you look like James Bond sitting at the gambling table. <laughs> And that's the type of image you want. It's a very masculine look. It's a very elegant look. You know, it, it combines elegant and masculine. And you're, it really just makes a huge impression. So, you know, I, I want to talk about wearing cufflinks because, like I said, I don't see it as much. So let's go over some, what, so go, let's go over all the aspects about cufflinks and how to wear them. Now let's talk about the history of the cufflink, which I find fascinating. <laughs> Now, if you go back to medieval Europe, people back then didn't have uh, buttons. They held their clothes together uh, with string, usually through lacing. They laced up the front of their, of their blouses, you know, their shirts. They, they laced uh, up the, the bottoms of their pants and, and the drawstrings on their pants. Uh, you know, and, and then by the 13th century, they started lacing up, the, uh, closing up their, their sleeves with either ribbons or string. Now, so, but now by the 17th century, um, clothing had evolved, and suddenly you had these um, these holes in, inside in the in the sleeves, which the the when which was a, a stitched um, buttonhole, which the French called the bouton de moche, which means sleeve sleeve button. <laughs> and at that point, rather than using the streamer ribbons, they started using these metal pins. Uh, with little chains that went through through the back to hold the sleeve together, and these were your first cufflinks. Uh, but but these were pretty much isolated to royalty and the upper class, and the French at the time had had the market on them. However, when um, King Charles II started wearing them in England, they really took off in England, and that got carried over into the Americas as well as the other colonies. And at that point, you know. Um, the, the cufflink was seen as the ultimate in, in, uh, in elegance. Uh, and, but once again, only the royalty and, and the upper class and aristocracy could, wear, could afford them. So they became big time gifts from royalty to their subjects and with the aristocracy and with the upper class. You know, they were still, you know, they were made of gold and silver um, and precious gems, you know, and they, they were very popular among, among that upper class. However, all of that come to a change uh, with an immigrant uh, uh, named George Clements who figured out during the Industrial Revolution that he could mass produce them. He got this idea 
from uh, factories that made bullets, and especially the little firing pin. He sort of sell that little firing pin, and he's like, "Hey, that looks like a cufflink. Hey, I could use this same te- this same fa- type of m- mechanization to mass produce cheaper cufflinks." You know, and just put the little bob on the end that would stick through 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 the sleeve, and and suddenly. Cufflinks become much cheaper and much more affordable, and the middle class first grabbed hold of them and because they were so related with the upper class and royalty, and ever, all the middle class were wearing them. Um, and, and then in, the, um, in 1924, they came up with uh, the, what's known as the uh, Boyer uh, facet, this small piece right here, um, by which it goes through the sleeve and pops out like that uh, to hold it in place. This led to less slippage and losing the cufflinks, which is very easy to do with, with the fat uh, the fat pin ends that would just stick through from before, and that really upped the up the popularity um, and went, took off with cufflinks. Now, during the, the Victorian times, uh, the cufflinks were very elaborate, lots of designs, lots of painted cufflinks. They could vary in price. They become a real status symbol to have nice cufflinks, but then they came up with enamel cufflinks, and which were much much cheaper, much more affordable, but can look just as fancy for a cheaper price, you know. And 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 they they become the most popular type uh, of cufflink, and in fact they still are. I'm <laughs> wearing an enamel right now, so thus the the cufflink with all with. Uh, now that it was being able to mass produce, it had a much, much a better facet. The, the, the cufflink was here to stay. Now that we've talked about the evolution of the cufflink, let's now talk about how to wear it and when to wear it and what to wear it with. Now, first off, if you're going to wear cufflinks, what you're going to need, of course, is a, 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 a double sleeve cuff what's known as the French cuff, which is what I'm wearing right here. This is a cuff that folds folds out and you fold it back over. It has a hole on each side and you have to feed it through all the way through all, all four holes and fasten it in the back. And it, and, it'll, and it leaves it, it makes it very secure, but and also gives it that distinct look. Now, I, a lot of men don't even own uh, uh, French cuff um, sleeves. Uh, and and I highly recommend that you get some French French cuff sleeves for for so you can wear cufflinks. They add this. The French cuff uh, adds a whole different level of elegance automatically. Be, you know, uh, you know, there's nothing against barrel sleeves. You know, I see them a lot, but you know, it's, you know, for work and all of that, there's nothing wrong with the barrel sleeve, and I think it has its place. But if you really want to up the game, get French cuffs. You know, French cuffs. You know, um, j- you know, with the cufflink, just it just changes your whole outlook. Um, now, when it comes to to uh, how, what and where to what what situations and where to wear cufflinks, cufflinks automatically um, state a more a higher level of elegance. Um, they're 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 a must if you're wearing a tux or or morning wear or wha, a, wha, uh, a white t- white or either white or black tie. You have to have cufflinks. You have to have these type of sleeves, uh, a fr- the French cuff. Um, but however, y- even in in business a business suit, the difference between wearing a barrel cuff with just regular buttons or a French cuff, it suddenly takes it once again from simple business suit to you know, a well-dressed man, an elegant man, automatically. It's just automatic. Um, and it is just as important as ties or any other accessory, even more so, because people are going to notice that. Uh, so, so you know, and now the question I've had had before is, do they go well with, with, with uh, casual, uh, dressy casual, um, with more business casual? And the answer is definitely yes. Uh, they definitely step step it up, just like they do with a business suit. They suddenly take a business suit to more of a formal suit automatically, just because of the French cuff and and and, and the um, and the, the uncufflinks. Uh, 
and that can also be say, said for for uh, business casual. You may be dressed much more, much more. You know, have a blazer on, a tie and shirt, um, rather than a full suit. But once you put on a, a French cuff shirt with the cufflinks, bam! It suddenly ups its elegance. It suddenly makes you look more professional, makes you look more well dressed. Now, if you combine that with a pocket square, you know, and or and, and or a, a boutonniere, bam! You've got you've got this combination right here. Hey, you are the height of the sophistication. You are an elegant man. You suddenly went went from just some sell, some salesman in the company or some guy that you know some cubicle guy. To suddenly you're James Bond, <laughs> and who doesn't want to be James Bond? As I said before, so it takes it to that level. Now the next question I would ask is like, is there outfits you really shouldn't wear cufflinks with? Well, it's a matter of opinion. I mean, they're definitely not for complete casual dress. If you're, you know, if you're just running around with a sheet with a, with a um, even a button up shirt. Um, you know, and you've got it out, then, you know, cufflinks are going to look odd. That is too elegant for uh, for a, you know, for a, a, a long sleeve shirt that's with, with the, with the, with the um, tails hanging out. To me, that looks like somebody wearing a t-shirt and a bow and a tie. It just, they just don't go together. Now, lately, I've been seeing some of these more fancier um, um, you know, well-made, made lo uh, longer shirts with which you wear with with uh, um, outside outside the waist. Uh, these longer shirts and people that have uh, cufflinks, I think they look pretty good. Uh, you know, kind of styled to make it look a little better with a cufflink. But and still, I'm looking at like that's still a very casual long shirt, not tucked in with. Uh, cufflinks. It just doesn't look right. I think with a longer shirt, this is more of my opinion, with a longer shirt you're wearing out like a summer shirt, um, it's not, that is a very casual look and a very casual look does not, even a dressy casual look, but that look does not go with cufflinks. Cufflinks should be worn with a suit or, um, or at least with a vest. Um, don't necessarily a, cr a cravat or a tie, and even if you take the cravat and tie away, and it's just a waistcoat and, and your uh, and a dress shirt, or even just a dress shirt that's tucked inside your pants, that's more what cufflinks are for. And I think that that's the limit you go to. It goes from white tie, black tie, business, um, uh, uh, business casual, and I think that it, you know, and more dressy casual. And I think it has to end there. When you go completely casual. Uh, leave the cuffs, uh, cuff leaks in their box. <laughs> now let's talk about how to pick the right cuff links for your outfit. Uh, and when it comes to this, I'll say what I always say, my old tried and true, color wheel, color wheel, color wheel. <laughs> Use the color wheel to coordinate your cuff links with your outfit. Remember what I always say about an outfit. An outfit, outfit is a working mechanism that works off of each other. Each thing works off of each other. And that would be with your shirt, your tie, your boutonniere, your pocket square, the, and your cuff links. They should all work together. And to do that, you need to understand how, the, how colors contrast, or, or what they sometimes call complement. And the color wheel is the best and quickest, easiest way to accomplish that. For instance, I'm wearing an orange shirt with a yellow tie, you know, um, and some yellow in my boutonniere and a yellow, um, excuse me, <laughs> orange shirt or, you know, yellow, some yellow and orange in, in my boutonniere and an orange pocket square. Now, orange is the complement or contrasting color to blue on the color wheel. So when you put these together, that works. Yellow, of course, is also another tertiary color to, with, with orange and makes up orange. So therefore, it's going to work as well with the orange. So the orange, or the orange, the uh, the orange, the blue, and the yellow all work together. Now you want to do the same thing with your uh, 
with, with, with your um, cufflinks. Now, as I've said before, when you're wearing an outfit, you have, if you're wearing a, a, a contrasting outfit, a complementary color outfit, you want to pick one that dominates and the other one accentuates. So in this case, that would be blue is the, the main color. I'm also wearing blue pants, blue hat, and orange is, is the complementing color and the, the less dominant color. So you see that I have the blue jacket and I have the, the, the orange shirt, you know, and um, the orange pocket square. Blue is still the main color, orange is the secondary color. And so for, therefore we keep that, I'm keeping that theme with my, with my cufflink, the orange shirt and a blue enamel cufflink in the French cuff. And that all works together, you know. Um, now, another thing about wearing cufflinks and wearing cu um, uh, French cuffs is the cut of your jacket. You know, the cut of your jacket should come to about an inch and a half, inch to an inch and a half from the end of your sleeve. You know, so your jacket sleeve comes about an inch, an inch and a half to the end of your sleeve. So that way, when you hold it up, the sleeve's poking out just enough, not too much, and shows off your, your cuff link, you know, and that's the way it should be worn. If you hold your arms down, it should be, like I said, about that uh, inch to inch and a half longer than your coat sleeve. So you should have your tailor, tailor all of your, your jackets to that length so that you have that effect. And it shows off your cuff links, and it's a fantastic look and one that people automatically pick up on. Now, when it comes to buying cuff links, of course, they're available at all prices, and they're really in, in anybody's budget. You can get cheaper made ones for just a couple of dollars, or you can get the ones made out of you know gold, silver, other precious metals, precious gemstones, um, such as di diamonds um, or crystal or rubies or onyx, you know, for hundreds to thousands of dollars. It really matters on your budget. But the good thing about Cufflinks is they come in just millions of forms, thousands of designs. Anything you can think of, they probably put on a cufflink. You you know you have a lot of really cute. You know you have some very formal ones. Uh, you know made like I said, precious stones or metals or or really fancy um, art deco designs and other kinds of designs. But you also have the kind of silly, funny, um, playful uh, novelty. Uh, cufflinks. So there's a tire market for those, you know, um, little dice, uh, you know, uh, little hearts, uh, playing cards, uh, you know, little race cars, bumblebees, uh, movie characters, <laughs> you know, you name it, you can find it on a um, on a uh, cufflink. Even initials that you can have special made, which that also adds a little bit of, cl of class and air, you know, and elegance to it. Even if a little ego, <laughs> and a little ego, as I've proven, can be a good thing. <laughs> which that brings me to another thing. Now I did say just earlier that these. Um, the more casual long shirts that you know are not tucked in at the waist that are really fancy people are wearing with a French with that come with a French cuff for cufflinks. Even though I think that those are too casual for a cufflink, what may work there? What I would recommend is if you're going to wear a shirt like that in a casual sense. Then use these more. You could use these more um, uh, novelty types of cufflinks to wear. It would, that would kind of match. It would add a little pop, a little personality to your clothes, your casual clothing. And I can see that. You know, if you're wearing one of these fancy long shirts with elaborate designs, uh, and and in it you have, um, you know, the the, uh, the dice uh, um, cufflink in, that would make kind of work. You know, that that I can kind of see that one. So you know that you know there you could there you could play with it in your casual wear, but really, really, ultimately, um, really fine um, cufflinks really deserve to be in um, more more dress clothes, you know, especially um, you know formal wear, business wear, uh, business casual, and that should be the limit. But if you are going to wear these longer shirts with the cufflinks. Get something, you know, get something quiche, get something uh, cute, get something a little flashy. That's a, that it's a it's a way to kind of show yourself off, and I'm always for that. <laughs> so, in conclusion, when it comes to cufflinks, 
there's something that every man should have in their wardrobe, no matter um, your economic status. Uh, they're very affordable. You can actually get, like I said, you can get a, a set from Amazon of 12 for about four, about 40 bucks, and that's not a bad bad. Uh, bad deal, and they look nice. Uh, so you know, get your cufflinks and wear wear them with, with whenever you put on uh, dress dress clothes. Whenever you put on formal wear or or business casual or business, get put when you if you're going to put that on, put on the right accessories. And one of the best quickest accessories you can use is the cufflink. Definitely get definitely get cufflinks and get a variety of them. Let them, you know, as I said, like with the longer shirts, don't let them just define your formal wear or business wear. Let them define you, you know, even in your in your more dressy casual wear. You know, they may that bring that pop and personality into your outfit through accessories and cufflinks still work. And if you're enjoying the this advice that I've been giving, like listening to, to my big mouth, then please. If you haven't already subscribed, hit this little King Henry head with my pretty face and give me a subscribe. Also, uh, go down and give me a like and leave a comment. Tell me about uh, how, what you think about cufflinks and the good experiences you've had with them or the bad experiences. I, lo I always love hearing from my subscribers and fans. So put on your be best attire, put on your best accessories, put on some really flashy cufflinks. That way, you'll stay pretty. Ha, 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 ha.